Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, so in this video, uh, I want to prove that the last time I was saying about the first and postulate, basically, I want to prove that uh, given n greater or equal to 2, there exists a prime number which is greater than n and less than 2n. And uh, if you're the first time to my uh, go to my video, this is my uh, my analytic number theory lecture, and I hope you guys subscribe to my channel. Okay, so today I want to uh, give the proof. Okay, so this theorem is very interesting. Uh, for example, uh, let's say n equals to 2. Uh, you have two and four, right? There is a prime number here, which is three. And uh, four equals to three, uh, you get, uh, right? So you get three and six. And then there is a prime number five. And then for n equals to four, you get four and eight. And then there is a prime number seven. And you can keep going. And you can find, you can do your, uh, you can do right computer program and uh, show that this is uh, true for uh, the BDN numbers or whatever. But uh, this is, this is very old theorem. Uh, that the person uh, gives the uh, conjecture this is true and approved by the uh, Chebyshev. And uh, I think it's early, I think it's, I think it's uh, 80 or something, something that people uh, finally find a proof. And uh, this is, this theorem is actually very, uh, this is uh, like the, it's very, very close to the analytic number theory. Okay. Uh, so this the uh, so this theorem has the has the proof which is very advanced. So uh, basically, when I say advanced, I using I, I'm saying that you need to you need to use the analytic number theory. So the simple proof is using the prime number theory. Uh, don't worry. So I will talk about the elementary proof and the the advanced proof. So advanced proof is a prime number theorem. Basically, you know that you're uh, the prime number which is less equal to x is approximated by uh, let's say one over o one x log x. Okay, so this theorem just tell you that the pi two x minus pi one x should be greater or equal to two for sufficient uh, large x. Okay, so you you can if you find x then you can uh, you can find if you find a sufficient large x such that this is true then you can numerically check. Uh, you can you make a check this theorem is true for a uh, small x, which uh, people already did. Okay, so uh, this is then I mean if you just see this, then this is probably trivial, right? Because you, you just need to count, you just need to compute this. Okay, and then you can uh, play around with it, and you can see that when x grows to infinity, then this guy must greater than one. Okay. Uh right, so this is more advanced proof. Okay. And also uh, from this, you can easily see that there is a, a small consequence, which is very trivial, uh, right? Suppose you did define Pn to be the nth prime. For example, the P2, uh, the P1 is two, uh, P2 is three, P3 is five, P4 is seven, keep going. And uh, this, person, uh, this person postulate tell you that uh, if you take a Pn and then you take the two Pn, there is uh, some Pn plus one. Okay, so it is Pn plus one. Okay, so which tell you that the uh, pm plus one less than two p. Okay, and this is definitely true if you know about the prime number theorem, right? Be because the prime number theorem will tell you that uh, the n's prime is approximates n log n. Okay, so definitely uh, the n log n is definitely uh, pm plus one, right? Less than two pn. Right? So we can see that uh, this pn is approximate n log n. So pm plus one is less than two pn. This is almost trivial. Okay, but this theorem actually has the uh, somehow like elementary proof, and the proof is a very a little bit long, uh, so we need to do it step by step. Okay, so now let's talk about the standard approach, the elementary proof. Okay, so when I say elementary, I mean no uh, analytic number theory. So no L function, no zeta function, no uh, probability method, first moment, second moment, short moment funds, no that kind of things. So just uh, go back to uh, so now let's, let's go back to the uh, the the high school. <laughs> okay, so now imagine that you go back to high school and then you try to prove the theory. Okay. Uh, hopefully this is possible. <laughs> okay. Uh, so in in order to prove this, we need to we need uh, we need to some uh, we need a lot of lemmas. So. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's write down. So first is lemma one. Okay, so this lemma one is three. Uh, let's say two n choose n, right? So let's say let's consider n greater or equal to four. Okay, so let's consider two n choose n. Okay, so theorem this this lemma one is very very trivial. That four n 
uh, divided by 2n, that's equal to uh, 2n divided by uh, 2n choose n. Okay, so proof. This is trivial, right? Because 4 to n is basically 1 plus 1 uh, 2 to n. So this is submission, right? Using your uh, lovely binomial coefficient. So you take the first one and the first term is one and the last term is one. So this is two plus two and k, right? k from one to two and minus one. So this four n, this four to n is uh, equals to two plus this. Right, so you let's say you re replace this to be two n and then replace this to, you, you take the largest term, right? The largest term is two n divided by n. Right, so this term is less than two n and divide two n divided by n. This is trivial, right? Because there's is there the largest term here is this, right? And then you replace every term. So there are two n terms here, and then there's a uh, there's a two n terms, and there's a two which you can basically neglect it. Right? So you get the uh right, right, uh, let's see. Right. So sorry, uh, there's a two n minus one term here, and uh, your your two n choose n must greater than uh, greater than two. Right, so you can combine this, you can combine this and you get this. Okay. So you get a two n choose n, that's so equal to four to n two n. So this is the, the more tiner, uh, more finer uh, results. Basically the, the trivial results will be, let's say four n, right? That's so equal to, let's say you get two n plus one terms, right? So let's say two n plus one, two n choose n, right? So you, you, can, also, you can also prove this. You you can also get this get this uh more uh uh more easier a more easier proof by just seeing a uh, replace a, you replace every turn to be largest turn, but but in this proof that uh I I pick up the first one is small one because I already know there there are two right so any when uh, you can check for angry to four that this is true. Okay, and let's say lemma two. Oh by the way. In the lemma one that actually uh, you use this or this is not important. So you can also use the simple list one, this two and choose n, that's equal to four n divided by two n plus one. Okay, so lemma two will be, uh, will be a little bit difficult. Uh, okay, so, so lemma two say that, lemma two say what? Lemma two say that, uh, uh, suppose there are a prime number, Suppose you, you got some p, which uh, the the let's say the largest let's say the largest prime power p to the r divides to n divided by n. Uh, let's say you get some prime number, and then this prime number has some power, largest prime power, which divides this. If then this uh, p to r less or equal to two n. Okay. And uh, so so this proof need to use the idea called the Legendre formula. It's amazing that uh, some some uh, company uh, like to using the gender formula in their test. Okay, so the gender formula just tell you that uh, the exponent. So I will not prove this formula, but uh, you can uh, you you guys can single proof. Uh, let's say sorry, the exponent p in n factorial. So where are people people like to just ask somebody if you're a prime p, and then next you ask that uh, what is the exponent of p. Uh, in n factorial. So uh, let's say, uh, let's say doing some stu uh, stupid examples. So uh, how many zero in 100 factorial? This is the, uh, the some count, some interview questions. Okay, so uh, let me just maybe solve this as an example, right? So how many zero in 100 factorial? Okay, so this is the, so this is the same as how many, uh, let's say you need to find the largest power to the five, five to the R divided by 100 factorial. Okay, so there should be 20 of them because uh, you get one to two up to five, right? And then 10, 15 up to 100, right? So you get uh, 20, 20 of them, right? But uh, for each 25, I right? say so 25, 50, 75, 100, least all of these will, will generate another one. So you get one, 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 right? So answer will be 24. So there are 24 zeros in 100 factorials. Okay, so exponent of P in N factorials is just basically, so let's call it R and P, divided by N divided by P, N divided by P squared, and uh, going, going to infinity, 
Okay, so this is the same as uh, in, 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 in this case, you get this. Okay, and then you keep, if you want to compute the third term that you get a zero. Okay, so this is the very simple proof. Uh, I mean, you, you can try to prove, to prove this theory. Okay, so let's go back to this, right? So I, I want to find the, so in, I want to find the, the, the factor, the exponent of P divided by two N divided by N, which is a two N factorial and factorial and factorial. So in this case, the R is what? R is just a, j from one to infinity uh two n divided by p j minus two j from one so i use the general formula for the numerator and denumerator okay i got these two okay and uh okay so let's see okay so let's see uh let's see so if uh let's say if n divided by p j uh, less than one half uh, plus uh, integer. So let's say n divided by pj less than one half, right? Plus integer. Then the this term, uh, uh, this term will be, let's say, that, let's write this term as this. J from one to infinity, two n pj minus two n pj. Okay. If n divided by pj less than half plus f plus some integer, then when you times two, then you get some, I mean, you okay, okay, so let's, let's maybe write, write this. Okay, you got this, right? So if you take the, if you take the, the floor function, right, you get the, uh, I mean, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see how to say this. Uh, right, so if you take the, uh, let's see, let's see how to say this. Okay. Uh, uh, Let's see, let's say this. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe that, maybe let me just, say, let me just say this. Uh, let me just say this. Okay, so n divided by pj, let's, let's imagine that this n divided by pj uh, is, uh, can be written as, can be written as this. I've written as this theta, right? let's say theta less than half, okay? And then plus some integer, okay? And the two and divided by pj will be two theta times uh, pro, uh, two theta plus two eta, right? So so one, so in this case, when we take the floor function, we'll take the floor function, right? Since theta is less than half, so two theta is less than one. So this guy will be two eta, right? And the two eta. So when n divided by pj equal to theta plus eta and theta less than half, then you get zero. Okay, so in this case, you get zero. So when n divided by pj equals half, equals to theta plus eta, where theta less than half, then these terms give you zero, okay? And then, and when uh, when is uh, the when is this whole term is down zero is that let's say n divided by pj is the theta plus eta and the theta greater than half. Okay, so in this case, uh, in this case, this term uh, can be can be one, right? But how how many turns? How many turns it can be, right? How many turns? So you can see that. Uh, okay, so you can see that. Uh, uh, you can see that in in you can see in this case. This term is zero, and but this term is one. Okay, so you can get the like j terms. Okay, so you at most j terms. Okay, but the the j is great. Uh, the j need to be right. So you can see when j, but when j greater than log p to n, right? This will be zero. Okay, because uh, because in this uh, because two n need to the two n divided by p j in order. These need to greater or equal to one, right? So, so the largest term, the largest term, pj, must less than equal to two n. Right? This is the largest term, right? So, the largest term uh, must less or equal to two n. Okay, so this is the second lemma, which is the most the most difficult one. Okay, so once we have this, then the this, this, the rest is trivial. Okay, so lemma three. Okay, so when p is odd. Say P is odd, and the uh, P 
less than two n and the less or equal to two n and greater than two n divided by three. Then the, the exponent, so the exponent means the largest power of p, which divides uh, two n divided by n is zero. So which means that, uh, so basically, these, uh, these just say that there is no prime factor. There is no prime factor. Uh, there is no prime factor in this region satisfy the uh, uh, divides two n divided by n. So there's no prime factor in this region which divides this. Okay. So the pre, uh, this proof uh, seems uh, trivial, uh, but you can I mean you can use the this previous, uh, you can use uh, this this uh, try to prove it. You can just use in this degenerate formula. Okay, but one uh, one idea is that uh, let's try to write this two n divided by n, right? So you get the two n two n minus one two n plus one and uh, one to two up to n. Okay. Okay. So imagine that so this p is two n divided by three, right? So there p must here there's some p here. Okay. And when you times two p, you get two p greater than uh, four n divided by three less or equal to two n, right? So there must be two p here, right? So p p term will cancel, right? P p term will cancel, and then there's no rest. There's no other p, right? Because if you times if you get three three p, this three p is already greater than n. So three p will uh, will will be be in here, which is not inside this. So p, the numerator and the denominator p term must cancel. Okay, and uh, you can prove that if there's a another term, uh, right? I mean, the, the two p must in inside the two p must in the de, uh, numerator, and the uh, p must in the denominator. This is the uh, this is the other region. Okay, so there's so the denominator and the numerator, the p factors cancels. So there's no prime factors divides to n divided by. Okay, so lemma four. Okay, so this lemma four is also simple. Uh, one can define an x a uh, primordial. Okay, so this is called a primordial, which is defined to be uh, the prime number uh, which less or equal to x p. Okay. Uh, maybe it's as for for example the ten primordial will be two times uh, three times five by seven. Okay, and the theorem. So this lemma uh, is basically the x primordial is less or equal to two to the two x minus three. It should be okay. Uh, for x greater than three. Okay, x three is a trivial. You can check that uh, this is three less than two to the six minus three, which is eight. Okay. Okay, so now let's prove by induction. Uh, so induction is what? Induction to uh, let, let's say x is m is integer, and uh, every this theorem works for any m that's uh, any x that's equal to m. And uh, and what? Okay, and then let's check and then let's check uh, things that uh, let's say you get two m minus one memory primordial. Uh, and uh, primordial, you can check that these terms, right? Because these terms only take all the prime factors here. So these terms actually is also uh, also integer, right? This term must divide the, uh, must divide, must divide this two m minus one m. So in particular, these two m minus one primordial and primordial must be less or equal to two m minus one divided by m. Uh, sorry, choose, uh, to, uh, choose m, right? So I can just replace it by this. And this is a half to n minus one, n minus one. This is the binomial coefficient. So there are two terms, and each term is less or equal to is it less or equal to one plus one, right? To the two n minus one. Okay, so this is binomial coefficient. So this is a okay. So this is a two to the two n minus one. Okay. So and by induction, which I proved that, uh, which I my induction tell you that m primordial is less than two to the two m minus three. Okay, so I replace these by these, which I show that the two m minus one, two m minus one primordial, uh, less than uh, that less than this two m minus one divided by two m minus three. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, I see this is a proof. Right? So this two n minus one primordial less than equal to two n minus one, uh, one sorry, not divides times two n minus three. 
which is a two to the four and minus four. Okay, so this you you this is so you start from you want you start from n right, and then you prove that two and minus one work. Okay, so two, because this is two and minus one, so we get four and minus two minus three. Uh, three. So two and oh, sorry, this is two and minus two. Sorry, I'm stupid. So two and minus two. And then this is four and minus three. So four and minus or oh, four and minus five. Okay. Uh, so let me just write down. So so if so basically we prove that if m works, then uh, two and minus one works. Okay, and then you can prove this by induction, right? Because I already proved this. So if m is if three and four works, then everything works. So just check. Check the the three and four uh, works, then everything works. Okay, uh, yeah, so basically uh, we already have four lemmas. So let me just write down everything and uh, let's go to the proof. Okay, so lemma one, lemma one is this for uh, two n choose n, uh, less greater equal to four n divided by two n. Okay, and then there's a lemma two, uh, where for each prime, they're prime to the R, prime to the, uh, the largest power must divide it, must less or equal to 2n. Okay, for any prime which divides this. So for prime divide, divides 2n choose n. Okay, they must read no odd prime. No R prime uh, in this region divides no R prime. Uh, so any prime number in this region must do not divide this 2n choose n. Okay, and the lemma four, which uh, the x primordial is less or equal less than uh, two to the two and my two x minus three. Okay, these are very sharp results. Basically, it, I I just said if you replace it two n by two n plus one, and this is negative about three, you can still prove this theory. Okay, so let's write down the final. Let's write down theorem. So theorem. There is a prime in uh, n and two n. Okay, so proof by contradiction. Okay, so suppose that. Okay, so suppose not. Okay, so there is a there. This is the the number line. Okay, and uh, you consider let's say you consider a prime number which divides. You consider the prime number which divides two and choose n. And uh, let's say this is two n, right? This is n, and uh, your uh, your contradiction, uh, your you 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 prove by contradictions, right? So there is no prime here. And also, oh, by the way, this two n is not prime, right? So indeed, there is a no prime here. Okay. And uh, by our lemma three, this is two n divided by three, right? So there is no prime number here. Uh, no prime number, no, right? No prime number here. Okay. So the so the possible prime uh, may uh, may survive here or some some here. Right? Okay. Uh, oh, also there's a there's a no no way here, right? Because uh, this is our theorem just tell you that. Uh, uh, so this is n, right? So our theorem tell you that there's a our lemma three tell you that there's no prime here. So let me just write this this n cannot be prime. Right? So all 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 are here. So there's no no prime here. All the prime must see inside this uh, purple region. Uh, okay, so the rest is trivial. Okay, so this two and choose n can be written as the all the products, all the prime number which divides, let's say all the prime divides two n, right? And the take out the, the, the largest power. Okay, so it's p to the its power. Okay, so let's separate into two parts. One is a square root of two n part, and the one is a p square root of two n. Uh, two n divided by three, p to the r uh, p n. 
Okay, so for any prime number, for any prime power, which is, uh, by the way, this is bounded, right? This is what we just say. So in this case, when P less or equal to square root of two N by lemma two, all of these, all of these product are must less equal to must less equal to 2n, right? So these terms at most uh, 2n divided times uh, the the number of the price, right? But that's this. So let's take the, the stupid bound, which is let's imagine that every return less or equal to square root of 2n is prime. Okay, so you take at least. And for this one, since p is greater than the equal to square root of 2n, right? Then these terms, the, then these terms can only this term can only be one, right? So the, the largest part in this case must, must be good. So this is a prime number. Uh, let's let's less than uh, let's let's do a stupid thing, right? Let's forget about the square root of two n and all, all and then take this. Okay, we we'll take all the prime number which is less or equal to two n divided by three. Okay, in this case, this square root of things is already greater than square root of two n. So at most have contains one power, right? Because p is greater than square root of two n, right? So p squared is already greater than two n. Okay, so which is not not uh, impossible from the lemma two, right? So this in this case, these are must be must be one. Okay. So these two n choose n. That's two n uh, square root of two n and all the prime number prime power uh, prime less than two n divided by three p. Okay, and this is the, what this is the primordial. So this is where well, is this? So it's a two n squared to the two n, and they use the lemma four. So which is a primordial, which you get four times two n divided by three. Okay, and uh, let's neglect the minus three terms. Okay, so this is two n choose n, and uh, by this, the, these results, right? This guy, results squarely equal to what? Uh, this guy by zero, right? Greater or equal to. Uh, four n divided by two. Okay, so get this, and you can check this. This 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 results cannot work for arbitrary n, right? When n grows infinity, then this turns four to n, right? This turns four to two n divided by three. So left hand side will grow much faster. Okay, so the numerical results shows that when n e, n equals to n less than four hundred sixty eight, this equation this equation holds. So when and greater than 468, this fails. So we tell you that uh, when n greater than 468, the Burston postulate uh, is correct. Okay, then one just numerically show that for every n less than 468, this theorem works. So numerical. Okay. So basically, combine these uh, results, which will prove this uh, burst and postulate for each uh, p for each uh, n and two n. There's always prime number c in c inside this. <sighs> Very large. Uh, by the way, actually, I learned this theorem. I know this theorem when I was high school. I read some books, and but up up, uh, up to now, then up to here, and then I can I I finally uh, has a chance to prove it. And hope you guys subscribe to my channel.